in Ukraine, we're already seeing the effects. We're now not just seeing the amazing videos from liberated Kherson in downtown with um, Ukrainian flags, with, with people hugging and crying, but we also see that now in Kyiv, despite um, late at night over there, um, people are out celebrating. In Russia, on the other hand, um, these images will probably just not be seen. Um, the Kremlin's control over the media over the the last few years and of course throughout this war has been growing so significantly um, that people are just fed disinformation and so we've seen those odd um, little videos with um, the commander of the forces in Ukraine and the minister of defense Shoigu um, uh, weirdly in kind of a Soviet uh, very stiff manner announcing um, the withdrawal from her son um, and so that has been what the Russians are getting these very brief um, kind of odd videos um, that are trying in a desperate attempt to frame the withdrawal from um, that part um, of the region in the end from Kherson city as not a strategic failure but something necessary in military terms um, and that's unfortunately all they will be seeing um, and uh, in, in that will continue to remain the pattern like we've seen um, just a month or so ago in Kharkiv, um, and like we've seen through the months of losses that um, the Russians have, uh, have basically endured on their side, little has been seen on Russian TV. The last thing I'll say here, though, because I think it's very relevant, is that the Levada Center in Moscow, the one, um, the one opinion poll um, organization that is still somewhat trustable, has been polling people every month to ask whether they support the continuation of the war or peace negotiations. And for the first time in the month of October, so before the withdrawal from her son, we see a majority of Russians now supporting peace negotiations with the fall um, of her son and the withdrawal. From their point of view, these trends will likely continue. And, you know, the what we get out of Russia are just basically our speculations. It's so cut off now in terms of media and communication and so controlled by the government that we really don't have anything beyond speculation. I will say, though, that it was natural. Uh, if I would have been Putin, I wouldn't have gone to announce the withdrawal and the failure in Kherson. He obviously doesn't want to be seen as responsible for that, but he jumps at every opportunity like we seen recently with the uh, annexation speeches um, in uh, at the end of September with the speech in Valdai when he has an opportunity to you know spin and um, and offer propaganda and basically tell us um, not just about Ukraine but how this is a war against the West and how us the Western society is so um damaged and uh, beyond repair, um, then he, we will see him um, indeed on TV. But when it comes to losses, he obviously does not want to take responsibility for that. So he pushes others um, like his commanders, like his minister of defense, that are becoming sort of the the speakers of the Kremlin on this opportunity without really having a voice um, in all of it. Beyond that, there's obviously the aspect that we keep talking about in international media, and that is um, the opposition to um, Putin that looks like sometimes like it's um, growing, particularly around the figure of Prigozhin, his former chef or cook, um, and now the head of the of the infamous um, Wagner group that on the day of elections here in the United States, the midterms announced that Russia is um, is meddling in and in doing election interference in the United States as something um, that they do all the time. They have been doing, he was saying they will be doing. His figure is very interesting because he is the only somewhat of an opposition, at least seemingly to Putin. But of course that opposition is the opposite of what we would want 
um, he is demanding generally more blood. He's very critical of the Minister of Defense. He does not, however, criticize Putin so far. So um, based on that, there's been a bunch of speculations that Putin's power is, um, is being reduced, but again, in the opposite way um, that, um, that would be um, uh, to our liking. And so then we have the question, if he gets replaced, if he is being removed from power, then so far, the only voices that we've seen countering that our voices like Prigozhin, and that will dictate Russia going further down. So um, I have to wonder to what extent these um, extreme voices, such as that of Prigozhin, are actually opposition or mm -hmm. just another sophisticated propaganda way of, um, of Putin himself to test public opinion internationally and in Russia um, and to actually maintain himself in power. He most likely is not happy, but I have to say here, not only that it was interesting and Joe Biden himself um, made that comment a couple of days ago that the Russians waited to announce the withdrawal from Kherson that we were anticipating now for weeks, if not months, on the day of elections um, and the uh, the response of the United States with every win, it's now a pattern um, that we're seeing is to push more aid um, towards Ukraine. But I have to say here um, in this instance, actually the UK is first, right? We had um, yesterday the UK's prime minister announcing a thousand more missiles as the news of her son um, was already um, uh, almost official, right? Um, and so we're seeing basically this trend of the what um, Putin himself calls the horrible Anglo-Saxon alliance, the United States and the UK, really leading um, this, um, this conflict and going against the fears that I guess we all share, at least I do, that, um, that we will see increased voices pushing for negotiations instead of um, helping Ukraine get their territory back um, and not just the territory but of course the people like in Kherson that are waiting for liberation. So, so far the trend um, here in the United States and in the UK um, as leaders and then in continental Europe somewhat following um, is that every time um, Ukraine proves that they can win and they can liberate territory, we help them more. I certainly hope this is an ongoing trend um, beyond midterm elections. We um, don't really have now, luckily, a reason um, to, to fear that this trend will be stopping, that we will continue to provide aid and stop censoring when it comes to what um, to, to tell the Ukrainians what they need and that we won't give them certain weapons because all the weapons that they're using they've proved now and time again are to liberate um, their own territory and in defense and not offensive.